Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Class Remotely and this is Mehjaveen. Today, I am going to talk to you about the short story, The Open Window, which was written by a famous British writer, Hector Hugh Munro, whose pen name was Saki. The Open Window is a witty, mischievous and slightly macabre short story and Saki achieved popularity for these types of narratives. The Open Window was written in 1914, around two years before the author expired. The central character of The Open Window is a 15-year-old girl named Vera who lives with her aunt Mrs. Sappleton. Vera is an intelligent but mischievous girl. In this story, she plays a pivotal role by taking the action of the plot forward and bringing it to the totally unexpected kind of conclusion which leaves the reader both fascinated and spellbound. When the story starts, a man called Frampton Nuttall comes to meet Mrs. Sappleton at her home. He is received by Vera, the niece living with Mrs. Sappleton. She tells Frampton that her aunt would meet him in a moment and in the meantime, she encourages the visitor to talk to her. Frampton Nuttall had come to the Sappleton household on the request of his sister. His sister had lived in that countryside area around four years before. As a result, she was familiar with many of the people living in the neighborhood. Frampton had been suffering from a nervous disorder and thereby the doctors had advised him to live in a quiet, rural environment. Frampton's sister had wanted her brother to maintain a certain degree of social relationship with the people living in the village for she had feared that if he didn't interact with people, he would be left brooding in the house alone and as a result, his depression would get worse. Nuttall had come to Mrs. Sappleton's house because his sister had wished that he get introduced to her. Vera is a very observant girl. She has been able to notice that their visitor looked a trifle unsure about his movements and he also appeared to be a rather hesitant and brooding kind of personality. She strikes up a conversation with Frampton Nuttall to find out how much he knows about his hostess Mrs. Sappleton. Nuttall tells her frankly that he hasn't much knowledge about the lady because he had never met her before. The only thing he knew about her was that she was an acquaintance of his sister and that the two women had known each other during his sister's stay in that countryside area around four years earlier. He tells Vera that he had come to meet Mrs. Sappleton on the suggestion of his sister. Discovering that Mr. Nuttall didn't have much information about his hostess, Vera points her finger towards a large French window that had been kept open. She now tells Nuttall that her aunt had had a tragedy in her life. Nuttall is surprised. Somehow, it had never occurred to him that tragedies could strike amongst the people living in a quiet countryside. Quite awestruck now, Nuttall listens to what Vera has to tell him about her aunt and her family. Vera tells Frampton Nuttall that exactly three years before, on that particular date in October, 
Mrs. Sepulton's husband and her two brothers, along with their pet dog, had gone out for hunting. They had all left through that open window in the house. The men and the dog had never returned. The news reached them that the troop had been engulfed in a rather nasty quicksand. Even their dead bodies had not been recovered. Vera went on to say that Mrs. Sepulton had not been behaving very normally after the sudden disappearance of her family. She still believed that her husband and her two brothers, along with the pet dog, would come back. With this hope, Mrs. Sepulton kept the window open even on a late October evening. It was her firm belief that her family would enter the house through that same French window they had used while leaving for the hunting trip. For this reason, Vera's aunt never allowed the window to be closed. At that moment, Mrs. Sepulton shows up. She apologizes to Nuttall for receiving him late. Nuttall, who had already been quite shaken by Vera's story about her aunt, now focuses his attention on Mrs. Sappleton. The lady mentions the open window, saying that her family members had gone out to hunt that morning and that she was expecting her husband and her two brothers along with their pet dog to enter the house through it. They always entered the house through the open window in order to avoid messing up the carpets. Mrs. Sappleton continues to talk about matters related to hunting trips. But Frampton Nuttall was already beginning to feel uncomfortable. He tries to change the topic of the conversation. So he speaks to her about his weak nerves and how his doctors had prescribed an assortment of remedies for him. However, he notices that his hostess is not paying much attention to what he is telling her. Instead, her eyes were fixed on the window that had been kept open. Suddenly, Mrs. Sappleton brightens up. She says that her husband and her brothers are back. Frampton cannot believe her words. He thinks she had gone crazy. However, when he turns to look at Vera, he sees that she is horrified. Then, in the partial darkness of the twilight hours, Frampton sees that through the open window, three men and a dog were entering the house. Frampton Nuttall did not wait any further. He darted out of the house immediately. Mr. Sappleton announced to his wife that his party had returned from the day's shooting trip. On catching sight of the retreating figure of Nuttall, he asked his wife who it was. Mrs. Sappleton replied that it was a strange visitor who had talked only about his weak nerves and then had departed from their house as though he had seen a ghost. Vera quickly remarked that Nuttall had probably been horrified to see their dog. She said that he had spoken to her about an earlier encounter with a pack of dogs during a visit to the Ganges in India. It had been a particularly horrifying incident when he had had to take shelter inside a newly dug grave for an entire night with a pack of street dogs snarling above. Vera was an expert at weaving fantastic stories and she did so within the fraction of a second. Thank you so much for watching. Do consider subscribing to this channel. Saki is a brilliant storyteller. Please read the original text of the open window if you haven't already. You will love it. Share this video with your friends. Meet you again very soon. Bye.